Okay, look, first of all, let's make something clear. You can shoot cinematic video with pretty much any lens, right? But the thing is, in the last couple of weeks, I've been getting flooded with the same questions. What camera do you use and what lenses do you use? And it's probably because I've been getting a lot of new subscribers, which is awesome, thank you for that. But I think it's also the perfect opportunity now to show you my favorite lenses. Again, because I've already made this video a while ago, but this is the updated version. So three must-have lenses, all budget, no G Masters or anything like that. And I'll also throw in one bonus lens, not so budget. <laughs> And we're not gonna talk about what a cinematic video should look like, because it's way too subjective and some people even throw up when they hear the word. That's fine. Cinematic, 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 cinematic. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> no, I just wanna show you what's important to me when it comes to focal lengths and lenses. And that's primarily having a wide range of focal lengths to choose from, because you'd be surprised how much you can emphasize movement and emotion by choosing the right focal lengths. And that's what cinematicness is all about, right? Story, emotion. Here, for example, this is the difference between a 24 and an 85 millimeter. Same framing, subject walking at the same pace, it's incredible how different it looks. Now, because of this channel, I've had the opportunity to test a bunch of lenses. Some were excellent, some not so much, but the three lenses that I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna sell those anytime soon. And I bought them myself with my own money, so I'm not trying to sell you anything here for a company. I bought these lenses myself and I love them. And the camera that I'm using, by the way, is the Sony a7S III. Okay, let's start with the first lens. And let's start with the one that I use the least. But I still think that every content creator, every filmmaker should have one. It's the 85mm. And this is the Sony 85mm 1.8. So not the 1.4. This one is half the price or less than half the price even. But personally, I don't see any reason to go for the 1.4. Because whenever I'm shooting video, I rarely set the aperture at 1.8. So why would I need 1.4? Usually I set it around 2.8, 3.5, something like that. And that already gives you a super, super shallow depth of field because it's a long focal length. And an 85 millimeter looks awesome when shooting close-ups. You get that real intimate feeling and that's what an 85 is usually used for, close-ups. But it also gets really interesting when you use an 85 for wide shots, for example, because then you get a really different look. So an 85 millimeter, I love the Sony 85 1.8. I don't use it very often, but when I do, I'm always amazed by how cool it looks. And in combination with a gimbal, wow. Okay, and then next we have the 35 millimeter. Whoop. This is a, well, not this one, because I'm using my favorite 35 millimeter right now to film this video, but a 35 millimeter, I use it for everything. And my favorite one is the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8. Again, not the 1.4. It's way too expensive and the 1.8 is awesome. I use it for these talking head videos, like I said. I've used it to shoot some short films for my channel, commercials, doesn't matter, a 35 always works. Some people prefer a 50 millimeter. I prefer the 35 because it's a bit wider and it fits my style more. This one is the Viltrox 35 millimeter, by the way. It's also really good, but I still prefer the Sony. And I'm not saying that the G Master is a bad lens. Of course not. I'm sure that the quality is epic, but I don't know. The value I get from these 1.8 lenses, it's unbeatable. And they're lighter and smaller, so, you know? Okay, and then finally, so we've had a 85 millimeter, a 35 millimeter. Now we need something wide. Yep, the Tamron 17 to 28 2.8. It's an incredible lens, super versatile. I use it for vlogging. 17 millimeter is so much more comfortable than, let's say, vlogging with a 20 or 24 millimeter. But because it has that 17 to 28 range, and it's a 2.8, I can use it for pretty much everything. Not so long ago, I used this lens to shoot my Apple commercial. Now, why did I go for the Tamron specifically? Well, first of all, it's a 2.8, and there are some other cheap 2.8 options, I think, in the same price range. 
but they all have an extending barrel and the Tamron doesn't have an extending barrel and I really like that, especially when I'm using a gimbal, I don't want to have to rebalance it every time I zoom in or out. So again, so much value for money, I love it. I love it. And maybe some of you might think now, why not just get a 24 to 70 millimeter and then a wider zoom and then you only need two lenses? I don't know, this is what works for me. I love this setup, I love these three lenses. It works for me. There's nothing wrong with getting a 24 to 70 and then a wider zoom. If that works for you, just go for it. Everyone has their own habits and needs, you know? Okay, and then, like I said in the beginning, I'll throw in a bonus lens, but it's not so much a lens, it's a type of lenses. A type, a type of lenses, yeah. It's the mighty anamorphic. This is a 50 millimeter, but like I said, I just wanna, wanna show you the type of lens. It's not cheap, but the thing is, anamorphic lenses were, until recently, always out of reach for you and me, small filmmakers, solo filmmakers, because they were so damn expensive. But in the last couple of years, you can get anamorphic lenses for reasonable prices. I'm not gonna say cheap, because it's not cheap, but it's reasonable. And the reason why I put this lens, well, not this one specifically, the type of lens, anamorphic lenses, why I put them on the list is because the first time I shot some random video with an anamorphic lens, I don't know, it ignited my creativity again. It's such a different experience to shoot with an anamorphic lens. It slows you down, it makes you do everything more intentionally. Composition, movement. It's not just because of the wide field of view and the anamorphic look, no. I don't know, it looks super cool, but it's also the experience of shooting with an anamorphic. It's also manual focus, so it slows you down, it's a nice experience. I don't even know how to describe it exactly. It's just fun and refreshing. And it gives me new ideas. So, if you've been thinking about getting an anamorphic lens, and you understand what I'm trying to say now, yeah, then maybe you should get one. Just give it a try. Maybe rent one first. Okay, and there you go. Those are my three favorite lenses that I use for 99% of what I do. And then the anamorphic, I don't have words for it. You should definitely give it a try. Again, I don't know how to describe it, but if you understand the things that I don't know how to describe, then you should give it a try. Wow. I think it's time to end the video now. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, drop them in the comments and see you in the next one. I'm a videographer and I'm on the verse, so when I shoot my shot, I don't know miss. I'm gonna take the shot. Take the shot, take the shot. You know I'm gonna take the shot, take the shot, take the shot.